Shabbat Shalom. In this week's Parsha, Parsha Tazria, we read about a lot of strange and unpleasant physical ailments, leprosy, and, and who knows what, things that are for a great, greater part of them not really relevant to our our lives today and not very pleasant to read about. There is one pasuk, one verse that remains completely relevant and would happens all the time that's the the the, the, the verse that talks about circumcision and i want to take advantage of this to offer a few insights into this uh, very special mitzvah which is also an oath a sign a sign of our special bond to god and the breed the covenant uh, and offer some observations on how this mitzvah looks up, looks to me anyway, uh, in view of uh, Maimonides and his philosophy as I've come to understand them over the years. Now, to begin with, I should point out that this verse is not taken by Maimonides, and actually, I don't think by anyone, to be the actual verse in the Torah, which is the Machai, which which is the one which uh, contains the actual biblical commandment to circumcise. Uh, that verse the verse that, that is the so, the source, the legal basis for our mitzvah to perform circumcision on male children is found, according to Maimonides and others, in Bereshit, in the story of Avraham, uh, where it says, he mol, he mol, uh, as, a, as, a, as a command, he mol, he mol, he don't bet cha. Uh, so, uh, it, our verse is taken simply just to add a, a special uh, stipulation that the Brit Mila uh, is uh, pushes aside or takes precedence over the Isu Malacha on Shabbos, so which is why, again, it's something that's all very well known in the Jewish community that you perform circumcisions on Shabbos. But having the actual mitzvah in the story embrace it with Abraham uh, is actually the the uh, the opening to some nice insights, I think, into my, the Maimonidean philosophy in this regard. So let me let me make now a few quick and uh, relevant points. First, it's a, a very important principle of the Maimonidean philosophy that the all the, the mitzvot in the Torah are binding because they were given to Moshe at Sinai. It doesn't matter whether in the biblical narrative they happened before, say in the time of Abraham or Yaakov, or even after, say, in Sefer Devarim. What makes them binding on the Jew is the fact that they were given to Moshe at Sinai. Uh, the second thing is that circumcision, according to the Rambam, has a specific purpose, and that is it's an actual physical uh, interference, a physical operation performed on the male uh, in, 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 with, whose purpose is to weaken the urge that's associated with that organ, to weaken the sexual urge. It's an actual, it's a physical intervention in our in our bodily uh, uh, capacities to make this urge, the, the greatest urge, the, the one that's the most dangerous in many ways, uh, weaker. And the third is that the Maimonides has a certain uh, understanding of the history of mankind, history of humankind, and the role of divine mitzvot in them. And I think we can sort of put these things together and, and, and make a, a coherent picture. Uh, well, I'm putting them together. I don't think that the Maimonides of the Rambam actually put them together at any one place, but I think what I'm offering is a valid Maimonides interpretation. So how will we put these things together? Well, we can begin with Adam, Adam Harishon, though Maimonides would probably not consider him to be actually an historical figure and say that he was given a commandment that was almost something that humans can't uh, live up to, uh, uh, not to eat from Eitz Adat. Uh, but then the descendants of Adam, with no Torah and no mitzvot, uh, fell into utter depravity, which is what happens when you have no restrictions. And the only solution was to wipe them out, even Noah. And when Noah and his descendants came out of the ark and re, began to rebuild the humanity. Then we re, they received, we received the seven 
the commandments, Noahite commandments, are seven mitzvot b'nei Noach, which are the minimum requirements for uh, an orderly, a civilized society in, in which uh, our behavior is regulated, the minimum required, so that we can not, you know, eat each other alive, and hopefully uh, be able to set aside the time and mental effort for contemplation. Then, some several hundred years later, Avram came and he got this mitzvah of circumcision, which is meant to curtail the biggest urge, the thing that's most likely to deflect us from our uh, mental and contemplative activities. Uh, but it was not, but it had a, a somewhat wider application. It, according to the Gemara and, and according to the Pshat of the Torah and according to the Rambam, it applies not only to Yitzchak, but to the Bnei Keturah. Avraham, after Sarah Aminu uh, passed away, took a wife called Keturah and had six boys from her. And we, all, all the sources agree that, that these six were also required to, to be circumcised. However, this is Maklokit Rashi, and it seems to be this may be what the, what the Gemara says, uh, says that it was only these six immediate, you know, descendants from Keturah who were required to circumcise, but not their offspring. But the Rambam makes it quite clear that the mitzvah for, that, that, that was uh, applies to Bnei Keturah applies to their descendants forever, just like it applies to the Jews. Moreover, the Rambam says that the Bnei Keturah are now mixed, into, indistinguishable from Bnei Yishmael, though even though Yishmael uh, is not included in the biblical commandment of, of circumcision, he was personally circumcised, but this uh, uh, biblical commandment uh, for, for, for generations to come does not apply to Yishmael, but because Bnei Keturah, the six descendants of Avram's uh, new wife, um, intermingled and are now uh, indistinguishable, so it applies to all the Ishmaelim. And then we have, of course, the Torah, which is the, the final legislation and which applies to the Jewish people. So we have a progression here from all of humanity getting, getting the basic commandments of the seven mitzvot b'nei Noach, then uh, a somewhat more select group, uh, Yish, Yitzchak and the B'nei Keturah, getting this additional commandment aimed at curbing a particular uh, uh, urge, and then finally the Jewish people getting the full Torah and its and its legislation that is meant to uh, set us firmly on the right path. So, so these are just a few thoughts on on this mitzvah, this important, critical, basic mitzvah, this covenantal commandment uh, of, of circumcision, and how it fits into Maimonides' conception of divine legislation for the humanity, for the Abrahamic family. The, most of the notion of Abrahamic religion actually is valid for the Rambam, and then uh, for the, for Judaism, uh, and it fits into I think his understanding of of the historical progression uh, of of this process, and I hope that you find it interesting. Thank you very much, and Shabbat Shalom.